In light of the lower than expected revenues, Finance Minister Enoch Godongwana has been warning for months that government will need to tighten its belt and undertake budget cuts. Now on Wednesday, he made an austere statement outlining the midterm budget. Although this was predicted, his message was very clear. Condition-free bailouts are no longer an option and budget cards are on the horizon. Mahai Tudumelan, good evening. My name is Tabo Mulukwanu. Welcome to this edition of Soweto Today. Tonight, we are joined via Zoom by Chifipa Mango, who is the Director of Economic Research and Strategy at Don Consultancy Group. He's here to dissect the midterm budget plan speech that was delivered last week by Minister Ino Kodongwana. Mr. Mango, thanks very much for taking the time. Good evening, welcome to the show. Good evening to you and good evening to all your viewers. Much appreciated. I mean, quite a lot of reactions that came out uh, after the MTPBS uh, last week there by Finance Minister. Uh, you know, um, I just want to get your reaction first before we can get into the details. Uh, how did you find it? Well, I think it was a budget which was presented under tough economic conditions. Uh, I, you know, Economy which is uh, enough jobs, you've got an economy which is only growing. You also got an economy which, uh, in terms of the consumer patterns, uh, the people are actually uh, depressed in terms of the cost of living, which are very high. And also, you've got the business confidence, which is also quite low, significantly. So, under those circumstances, obviously, I think uh, it was uh, befitting in terms of uh, the, how the budget was presented. So I think uh, um, that is what I can say, the positive thing that no, has come out, that no, it, it was presented under tough economic conditions. Mm, I mean, I'm looking at, uh, you know, what he said, that the minister is saying that uh, the economic growth outlook has weakened, you know, in line with the changes in the world economy and continued uh, energy and logistic uh, constraints. And I mean, we are facing quite a lot of issues there. But uh, just, you know, looking at those um, things that he has uh, tabled there um, how important is it that uh, we, we you know we focused for the year ahead well i think you're quite right in the issue of uh, depressed economic conditions uh, i think the projection in terms of the gdp growth for for this year is now being divided downwards to 0.8 percent and I think it's more driven by the uh, economic conditions we're facing uh, domestically, but also globally. Uh, from the domestic side, I think the pressures uh, have come in because of the issue of load shedding, which have depressed the production, both in the mining and the manufacturing sector, which are the key segments when it comes to job creation, as well as uh, uh, growth for the South African economy. But also, if you're looking at from the perspective of uh, some of the elements of logistical costs, uh, Transnet has really been a failure in terms of uh, providing the industrial uh, plant catalyst uh, with regard to transport system. Railway is one of the key areas where most of the industries from the mining side rely on in terms of transportation of their uh, minerals for the export market as well as for industrial base in the domestic economy. So that has actually really derailed the element of industrialization in the South African economy. Uh, with mining cells uh, uh, being affected, but at the same time also mining production being affected. Uh, so we are really in a bit of a, a tough time uh, on the economic side, mainly driven by the inefficiencies with regard to ESCOM, as well as inefficiencies with regard to the transnet in terms of their ability to provide the necessary capacity for, to, uh, for the economy to actually move forward. Mm. Uh, you know, I'm very much interested also in finding out how important is it, you know, to assure investors i mean there was uh, uh you know with a few months that we had uh, this year uh, the BRICS summit you know uh the allegations that we actually uh you know uh, supplied russia with uh weapons and you know just the tensions that have been happening uh on a geopolitical uh environment mm -hmm. how important was it to assure investors that actually uh, south africa still has a working economy Well, I think it is quite important in the sense that, no, you know, we did uh, well in terms of hosting the big summits. I think a number of issues came up there. Uh, one was the issue about uh, the, the element of moving away from the dollar. Much as it can, it can have some political connect uh, elements uh, globally, but I think uh, uh, in terms of addressing the challenge the economy is facing, 
one has to look at it from, from the point of view what are the domestic issues that you are facing. So, yes, politics will come into play from the relationship point, but I think we are now hosting the Agoa uh, Summit, uh, which I think has also gone well in terms of what were, what were expectations from the South African side. So, issues like that, I think they get, uh, they put some tensions which come in uh, at, the, at the same time, but I think as you wind up maybe over time, if I'm not, that also becomes subdued in terms of uh, relationship wise. So the, the global political situation will always play a key role in terms of the relationship economically, in, in terms of trade dynamics, and also in terms of utilization of some of the platforms which we use in terms of payment systems. So those elements will always be there. It's a question of how best you can maneuver, how best you can still maintain relationship with those uh, players on the global scene. So I think uh, we have done well, well in terms of assuring that. But I think uh, the only concern we, we need to look at in terms of the economic from the South perspective, especially bringing back to the issue of the budget, is our debt levels, which are really increasing on a, on a large scale. Uh, currently, we're sitting at almost over 70% debt to GDP uh, ratio uh, of the economy. So and if you look at from the budget perspective, we see that no, almost 1.3 trillion will actually be spent in terms of debt uh, servicing for this, for, for, from the finance ministry. So that, to me, is an area of concern uh, with regard to how we're managing our debt. I mean, you're highlighting a very important issue there. I mean, I was going to look at the issue of the um, microeconomic policy settings, uh, you know, as the finance minister has said there, uh, the issue of debt, uh, you know, budget deficits, also uh, the high debt that we have as a country, and also the, ba the bailouts that, uh, you know, we've, we've had uh, over the years, but we saw the minister being a bit, you know, playing cautiously and saying that, look, there will be stricter conditions on certain things. And then, you know, other SOEs were, were definitely not going to be getting anything. Well, I think uh, if you look at the challenges we were faced on the SOEs, such as uh, ESCOM and Transit, uh, it is a, a, a worrying picture. Uh, ESCOM, for the first time, record uh, losses of 24 billion. Uh, looking at transmit also losses in almost, almost close to 5 billion losses. And I think that's an area of concern. Uh, but I think those institutions have had some uh, uh, the issues uh, from way back. It's not something which is uh, starting now. It's been building. I think management issues have been a big concern there. How this, those institutions have also been, uh, uh, in a way, abused from the point of view of corruption, I think remains also a key element that needs to be addressed. Uh, but I think it, it realistically, if you look at from the spending which the uh, minister announced, 7.4 billion uh, trillion in the next three years, mainly focusing on a social wage, uh, primary health care, education, and social protection. I think, to me, that is where he has done very well because uh, poverty is still uh, right in the in the African economy, and I think I know there has to be a way of protecting the vulnerable pe uh, people. So the continuation of that element within the spending. Uh, almost close to uh, 1.1 trillion in the next three years towards social development, for instance, health, uh, looking at 8, 836 billion in the next three years. I think those are areas where we really need to be focused on as a country. So yes, the debt issues all come in. I think the issue is about understanding what we are using that debt for. So if we are using mm -hmm. that, that debt to get debt, but using spending on an unproductive aspect, then I think it derails the progress in the Mr. Mango, I want us to park it there. We're going to take a quick ad break. When we come back, we continue the conversation. I want us to delve deep into what actually came out. As you, you know, you highlighted a few figures there from the MTPBS uh, that happened yesterday. Do stay with us. We're coming back after this. Welcome back. You're still watching Soweto Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. If you just tuned in before the ad break, we got to look into the concept of the midterm budget plan and, you know, got an understanding of it with the help of uh, Chief Economist Chifi Pamango, who is the Director of Economic Research and Strategy at Don Consulting Group. He's still joining us via Zoom this evening. Mr. Mango, thanks very much for staying on. I want us to look at, uh, you know, uh, the budget speech in its entirety. Uh, that was, uh, you know, presented by Finance Minister Ino Kodongwana last week. We touched on various things, uh, but he mentioned that the South African economy is focused to grow at 0.8%. Uh, 
in uh, 2023, slightly lower than uh, 0 0.9. That was predicted in February budget speech. Uh, j just tell us why there was a slight decline from the 0 0.9 that was initially forecasted to a 0 0.8 percent. I think it's more around uh, the environment which we are facing domestically. Uh, for example, if you look at the aspects of uh, ESCOM load shedding, uh, it has derailed production in the mining um, as well as in the manufacturing sector, which are the key segments of the South African economy when it comes to the measurement of the GDP. Uh, but also, you bring an element of uh, destabilization in the, in the global economy. Uh, some of our exports have actually been affected in terms of uh, our supply to the uh, international market. So if you look at the export trend, I've not been actually growing in the manner we're supposed to be growing. Uh, one of the areas I think we have also faced challenges in the, on the point of view of uh, the railway system, uh, which also is uh, exactly have the uh, inability uh, for it to be utilized in terms of uh, taking our products, uh, mainly especially through the transit rail one, rail, railway line. So I think that that has also caused the element of uh, a reduction also in terms of uh, production in the mining sector, but also in terms of the export capability for us to export into the international market. So those two key areas, uh, which is ESCOM, as well as transmit issues, challenges, have derailed the growth of the South African economy. But I think also from the point of view of business confidence, there hasn't been much investment in the economy, obviously driven by those two key factors, which is the energy supply in the economy, as well as the, trans the reliable transportation system, from, from transit. So investment in the economy has actually been low. If you look at from that perspective, for example, the business confidence index itself is sitting at around 33 index level, which is quite low if you compare to how we used to perform in the past, let's say, 10 years, when it was above, let's say, uh, 50 uh, index level. We're also looking at the consumer confidence level, it's actually on the negative side, which means that you no, know, the consumers are not getting into the retail market where also most of the revenue from the government in terms of that is also generated so those are some of the key elements i think which have actually put us in a, in a tough situation in terms of the picture we're seeing with regard to the GDP growth which is now projected to grow at 0.88 percent mainly driven by these key factors that which i've mentioned here mm. i mean i'm looking at uh, you know uh, uh, pre-covid levels uh, including now uh, obviously somewhere somehow the economy has not uh, yet, uh, you know, improved uh, since uh, the COVID-19 years and, and, and stuff. But, uh, you know, how has the economy seen growth, you know, above the pre-COVID-19 levels? Uh, uh, are we seeing slightly an upward trend or uh, there's still a bit uh, of a long way to go at this stage? Well, I think the challenge of the growth in the South African economy, uh, put, put COVID or before COVID, have all been you know, on the on the difficult path, uh, um, the economy used to grow uh, almost close to average about 5% between 2006 and 2010 uh, because of the key infrastructure projects which government embarked on, mainly to support the World Cup uh, 2010, uh, Soccer World Cup. So though we had a lot of uh, projects which were being implemented across the, uh, the country, and some of them, I think, were also relying on terms of the local suppliers. For example, the steel industry benefited a lot, that, that the cement industry benefited a lot. Uh, but now, since the easing of the most of the infrastructure investment in the South African economy, we have now faced also a, a, a kind of a downward trend with regard to the growth patterns on the, on, uh, on the economy. To the point that no, we have never grown even above five percent since the 2010. So it tells you that no, uh, much as you can bring the element of uh, COVID, uh, well, it all COVID did was just to okay, western the situation which we are already in a worse position. So I think the fundamentals of the South African economy is that in such a way that no, we need to address the structural issue that we are facing, uh, which is the energy supply which is a logistical issue that we're facing, but also some of the elements include, for example, the skills uh, development. Uh, we're also lacking areas of uh, in engineering uh, skills in some uh, sectors which are very key for the South African economy, particularly the manufacturing sector. So those elements, I think, we have still not addressed them uh, in terms of how best you can position the, uh, the South African economy uh, going forward. So the growth patterns uh, really, uh, for us to grow about 5%, uh, like what we did, uh, during the, the 2006 uh, period, on average, it's because we have uh, more or less like eased our approach in terms of implementation of government policy. We have eased our approach in terms of implementation towards the key projects which support growth in the in any economy, which is infrastructure development. Mm. Mm. Uh, 
Um, I, I mean, some of your colleagues are very concerned, particularly on, uh, you know, some of those issues uh, that uh, the minister said, uh, talking about addressing the key challenges. You did highlight uh, the issue earlier on when we started the conversation. Infrastructure delivery, um, you know, we know that in investment in, in, in infrastructure is very central in promoting economic growth and uh, job creation. But it seems like, uh, you know, also these things are riddled by a lot of uh, corrupt uh, practices that have been happening over the years. Hence, we haven't seen a progress in terms of that. But um, uh, the issue of strengthening fiscal credibility and uh, also social protection and public employment. But I'm very much focused on the, uh, you know, the public, you know, the public wage bill. Uh, we know that uh, the, 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 the this public service wage bill has been a very contentious issue. Uh, and then now he said that, uh, look, uh, we need to uh, have significant trade-offs and clawback mechanisms, you know, that should be implemented to mitigate that. But uh, I, 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 I'm not sure how, how is that going to work, as we know that uh, we are facing quite a lot of, um, uh, you know, the issue of unemployment, it's very, very, very serious in the country. But talking about not recruiting people for less critical posts is something that, uh, you know, unions obviously will have pushback on. Well, I think it's not only uh, the, the issue of world being obviously it's more uh, on the aspect that you know, the world has been rising. Uh, but I think uh, how you manage that is, is to look at to say uh, uh, if there's duplication in terms of roles, then there can be a problem in that because now instead of uh, having, for example, a, a job which can be done by one person, you are now dividing it to two people. Uh, but I think it, it also got a little bit of some political dynamics to play. I mean, you, you, you cannot rule out the fact that no, next year we're going through uh, general elections and uh, the government is supposed to be creating a conducive environment for job creation. And I think uh, if you've got a government on its own, they will start now, for example, taking the route of retrenchments uh, just because they want to look at uh, minimizing the growth in terms of world view. Then I think it could also put uh, political connotations in terms of how it can be perceived. Uh, both from the opposition as well as even the general public in terms of uh, uh, people being retreated from government. So it carries some little bit of your political uh, elements to it. So government obviously will, will have to be very careful in terms of how they manage that process. That's why you've seen that no, that, that process might even take place, let's say, after the elections. Mm. Uh, but no, it, it, it's, it's set on a good pace in terms of how that can be implemented. So for example, the restructuring issue from government. Uh, it, it will happen maybe, but not in, in, in this uh, uh, time when we're going to do to, to elections next year. So those are issues that carry political weight uh, in terms of how you, how you provide them with regard to the decision from government side. So the way do, I think, is, has always been a contentious issue. Uh, it will always mean a, a, a element of a union in terms of how best they can also do it. But I think that not, uh, the best way you can manage is to reach a consensus whereby no. Uh, the cost element is actually not increasing into the level whereby no government can't even afford to pay its own workers. So that's something I think needs to be looked at. So there has to be element of responsibility, both from government, but also element of responsibility both from the unions in terms of what packages are put on the table with regard to the wage bill increases from the uh, for, for government. But among, I want us to take a quick ad break. When we come back, I want us to uh, just wrap up the conversation by looking at the you know impact of these findings on uh, just the general public uh, as an ordinary South African outside. What does this mean? We're going to take a quick ad break. We're coming back after this. Welcome back. You're still watching Soweto Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. We have reached the last segment of the show and we're still in conversation with Chief Economist Chifipa Mango, who is the Director of Economic Research and Strategy at Don Consulting Group. He's joining us uh, via Zoom just to wrap up the conversation with us. Uh, Mr. Mango, thanks very much for uh, staying on. You know, I want us to look at the impact of these findings. Uh, to the general public, uh, you know, uh, how is it going to uh, affect our pockets as a nation? And what does this mean for a country that, that is reeling from these high numbers of unemployment? Well, I think uh, what that uh, tells us, obviously, that no, uh, the level of investment in the economy uh, is too weak. Uh, so is that for, for that to have to, to improve, obviously, we, we have to look at uh, dealing with the, what is causing that in the economy. So we need to urgently address the issue of ESCOM. 
we need to edge to address the issue of transnet, um, whether that will take a, a form of a different shape now, because I think we have seen that now uh, the bailouts are no longer an option. So if it means dealing with the issue of management at these institutions, uh, that's something that, that needs to be addressed. Because as we speak now, these are two institutions which don't even have CEOs currently. So which means that no, there's two element of instability with regard to how those that will actually move forward. So we need to look at uh, addressing that. Uh, those institutions not only do, do not have CEO, but they also have problems in terms of like you not know, maintaining the executives in those in those uh, uh, positions. So we need to address that agenda in the country. I mean, just lastly, before I let you go, I, oh, you know, in conclusion, the minister said that, uh, as you're saying, that, uh, you know, we need to work on certain things, including the issue of the rail, uh, uh, you know, and the lifting of the energy, as I said, logistic constraints uh, that have been impacting on the economy uh, in its entirety. But, you know, from onwards, we are heading to the elections now next year. Uh, do you think that, uh, you know, this has somehow raised confidence from uh, the markets uh, and also just uh, investors in closing? Well, I think it does in the sense that, no, there's an acknowledgement from government with regard to addressing the debt issues that we are currently we are facing. There has also been acknowledgement from government in terms of the looking at stabilizing the expenditure. So that's also very positive news from the investors' perspective. I think from the domestic uh, uh, side is that no, the social well being continuation uh, is positive for the ordinary people. Uh, improvement of continuation of expenditure towards primary health is also very key for the uh, domestic uh, individuals, uh, but also in terms of education and social protection. So, those are the key elements I think that no, uh, if, if they continue uh, expenditure in that line, obviously, it brings also confidence on the domestic market. So, it, it has done a balancing act in terms of addressing the interest of investors, but also looking at the, the changes our economy is facing with regard to our, our people on the ground. So we've done a balancing act. Mr. Mango, thanks very much uh, for joining us this evening. Much appreciated, very insightful. Thank you very much. That was uh, Chief Economist uh, Chifipa Mango, the Director of Economic Research and Strategy at Don Consultancy Group, uh, giving us an understanding of the recent midterm budget plan speech that was tabled last week, Wednesday, by Finance Minister Ina Godongwana. We heard the President saying that South Africa urgently needs higher economic growth, saying that, uh, you know, the country's national development fortunes uh, rest largely on lifting energy and logistic constraints. We hope that uh, as we uh, head to the 2024 elections, these things would be uh, resolved. Uh, well, that's how we wrap it up for today's episode of Soweto Today. Remember, we love hearing from you. So please feel free to talk to us about this episode. Send us an email. It's uh, Soweto Today at SowetoTV.co.za. Alternatively, you can call or WhatsApp us. The number is 081-531-8857. From myself and the rest of the team, Mas Chabakobol is up next with your primetime news. Good night and thank you for watching.